Hey everybody, Ed Holman, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today's going to be a fun little video. I have got this little beauty, little tube amplifier from Boya Sound, and it's sweet and just wonderful, and we're going to talk about it in a minute. So sit back and relax, and we're going to play with tubes. Warm tubes glow like even sun. Memories return one by one. Echoes of the music's fun. Magic sounds have just begun. Oh, got hi-fi talking true. Stereo dreams she shares with you. Feel the rhythms break through. Music's heartbeat soft but true. So the Boya Sound F5 is a neat little low power tube integrated amplifier. Currently, as of the date of this video, is selling on Amazon for $299.99. So 300 bucks. And it's really cool. It is uh, 3.2 watts a channel, whether it's 4 ohms or 8 ohms, and there's taps on the back, and I'll show you in a second when we get to it. Um, it does have a frequency response of 35 hertz to 25,000 hertz, so it doesn't dig super deep, but believe me, the bass it provides is very, very satisfying. Now, the way it works is it uses a 6N1, and this is actually a 6N1J for the voltage preamplification, and then 6L6 is for the output amplification. Now, this is a dual triode design, so it has two triode sections, you know, in one tube, so it obviously can do stereo. And it's, it adds some flexibility for the designers in that using they can use one section for gain and the other section for phase splitting. Now, the tubes themselves are 6L6, and they're typically used in single-ended pure class A, and this is a pure class A amplifier. Um, this provides a large driving current, so it's got good current, even though it's not a lot of power. You could run these tubes at a higher, get a higher wattage out of them, but there's some limitations on the transformer where there's a lot of money being spent. So the 6L6 is actually um, a beam power tetrode, and basically what it is in this type of a tube, the design includes a beam forming structure that helps focus the electrons from the cathode to the anode. Now, there are plates that give off electrons, and that's what transfers the power from one end of the tube to the other end of the tube. And it, this improves efficiency and performance. While it has the features of a triode, the cathode anode plate, control grid, and two beam forming plates, the configuration allows for higher power, better linearity, and that's really, I think, why they're using it here. So it's very, very popular. Now, you can roll tubes on this all day long if you want to, and I'm going to have to read off the script to tell you what they are. So you can do, for the output tubes to replace the 6L6s, you can do 6P, 3Ps. You can do EL34s, are very popular. 6550s, again, very popular. KT66s. And for the preamp tubes, you can do 6N1s through 6H1s, and there are variations of those. Or ECC85s, which are really common, easy to get. Um, it does use 150-watt power transformer, but a 15 watt linear output transformer. All tube amplifiers, most tube amplifiers have output transformers. There are designs called OTL or output transformer less tubes uh, amplifiers, but they're not very common uh, and they can be very expensive and they can be rather unstable. So anyway, that's it. This will drive anything you want to plug into it. And honestly, I did. And we're going to talk about that. Let me fit, spin it around real quick and show you the back just real fast. Two inputs and a switch for the sources, right? So CD and auxiliary. You got your 8-ohm taps, your 4-ohm taps, your ground, your IEC power socket. That's it. On the front panel, there is a separate power control and volume control. And it's a really neat little piece. So what the way I tested it, and I'm going to show you a, a couple of quick things. I've been using it with the Dolly Opticon 2 Mark II uh, six and a half inch stand mount speakers. They are four ohms and they're rated at 86 dB. So they're not easy to drive. And when I do this, I'm going to, what I did was I took the Duke Audio VU3 Pro and I'm going to show you the power meter and show you how much power the amp's actually putting out. And then I'm going to show you an SPL meter on the same screen. So you can see the output of this little beauty into 86 dB efficient speakers and it's quite remarkable. So we'll have fun with that in just a second. It's going to take me a second to reconfigure for that. So bear with me and I'll be right back. I'm about two and a half meters from the speakers. Thank you. 
As you can see, we're just barely hitting one watt. You don't need a lot of power to play the music loud. Well, as you can see from that little demonstration, you know, one watt goes a long way. We were peaking on the meter at just a little over one watt, and we were seeing peaks in the low 80 dB range. We were consistently in the you know, mid to upper 70 dB range, and it sounded great, and it was plenty loud. I mean, most of us don't listen at 80 plus dB frequently, occasionally, but most of us listen in the 70 dB range, peaks into the 80s, maybe a bit. So you can do that with one watt, maybe a watt and a half. So it's a bit of a kind of a, a dichotomy of what we think we need watt-wise and what we actually use watt-wise. You know, I've got a bunch of amplifiers that are over 100 watts a channel. I don't ever use them that at, at that level of power or ask it to deliver that level of power ever. But there are some things to be said for headroom and dynamics and all the other stuff, which are important. But it goes to prove that a little amplifier is just a wonderful thing. It can do wonders. Now, the thing about this amp and the thing about most tube amps like this in this low watt category is their sound quality is just amazing. This has that classic tube sound. Um, I did, I ran it with the Dolly Opticons. I fed it, believe it or not, I fed it off the live Harmony DAC um, to give it the best possible signal. And this is not, I, you know what, I wouldn't be playing ACDC on this amplifier. Um, I would play more acoustic music, vocals, everything sounded good. Now we'll talk about the albums I used, um, but, and there's some dynamic stuff in there. But the sweetness of this is just amazing. The, the, the Class A sound, that tube warmth just comes through in buckets on this little bad boy. And for 300 bucks, if you're tube curious and you want to get started and you're not sure where to begin, this isn't a bad spot because you can roll tubes. EL34s and KT66s and 6550s are readily available. So it's not that hard to do. And it's not expensive. So it's a lot of fun. Now, granted, it has no features, but you know what? It makes music and it makes really pretty music. So I tested it with the Dolly Opticon 2 Mark IIs. I tested it with the ELAC DBR 62s. I even ran it on the Neil Blanchard Design MLTL 6s and it did okay. Um, you know, as I said, if you have a speaker that's in the 90 dB range, high 80s, low 90 dB range, you're never going to use more than maybe two watts of it. Um, just because it's going to be so loud, you're not going to be comfortable sitting there listening to it. So to test it out, I used a couple of different albums. I used this album from Dave Mason called Let It Flow. Now, Dave Mason is a classic 70s rock guitarist. I mean, he was part of uh, Traffic, Blind Faith, Derek and the Dominoes. He played with Delaney and Bonnie. He played guitar on George Harrison's album, All Things Must Pass. Um, and obviously on this LP, his big hit on this was uh, We Just Disagree. I love Dave Mason's style. His guitar work is excellent. This is a very well-recorded 1977 rock album done quite well. Good detail. His guitar work is excellent. Um, there's, again, it's a studio album, but it's very well done, and it's very full-sounding, and there's good rhythm and good pace to it. And, you know, did this dig all the way down to the bottom octave? No. But the bass it gave you was very satisfying. It was very full. It's kind of a lush sound. And that's one of the things about these kinds of low-watt Class A. Uh, SET tube amps is they are lush sounding. It's that, you know, kind of classic stereotypical tube sound. Now to do something a little bit different, because I like doing stuff different. I did this. This is an amazing album from Ravi Shankar and Zubin Mehta. It's called the Sitar Concerto Number no. 2 Raga Mala. And it actually was commissioned by the New York Philharmonic Orchestra in 1981 and is dedicated to Ravi Shankar's collaborator on this, Zubin Mehta. But this is an actual recording from the uh, London Philharmonic in 1982. Um, and it is an interesting album in that it kind of combines the rich tapestry of classical of Indian classical forms kind of put into a Western musical convention and structure and kind of a more orchestral thing. But Ravi Shankar's sitar playing is absolutely amazing. It's a fascinating listen. The space around it, you can hear it was a very good recording as far as 
room dynamics and imaging. You can hear he's centered. Um, you know, imaging on these amplifiers is kind of, it's, it's lush and it's full and it's kind of holographic. It's not laser focused and it's not pinpoint, but center image is good. Depth is good. Width is good, but it's just, it's kind of like a, an impressionist painting of what's going on in the music. You get a sense of it and you get the, the richness of it and the, kind of the holographic and you kind of got to squint a little bit to find things, you know, precisely placed, but it's just so wonderful to listen to it. Just the sound quality is amazing. So to do a little bit more kind of contemporary rock and roll, this album from The Pretenders called Get Close. And this is from 1986. And this is the fourth album for The Pretenders, and it's the third lineup for the band. Obviously, Chrissy Hind is an amazing songwriter, singer, musician, and everything. Um, she's in full stride on this recording. Um, it is got a collection of kind of really soulful, you know, her very textured, very, very interesting voice and kind of some more mid-tempo pop stuff. It was very radio friendly back in the day in 86, but there's some great stuff. And there's a real standout song on this. For me, it's called Him to Her and it's H-Y-M-N to Her. It is remarkable. Her voice is amazing. It just, it's delicate and powerful all at the same time. It's textured, it's nuanced. Now, there's no recording and there's a lot, there's some reverb on this, but the nice thing about this album is there's little or no compression at all. So it's very good and dynamic and this kept pace the whole time. Again, the richness of the tubes and the smoothness of the sound just made it so pleasant to listen to. You can sit and listen to this all day long. This is not for the times when you want to do precise listening and you want to know where, where that violin is standing and where that cello is and where that bassoon is and that kind of stuff. It, it, this is for just sitting back, relaxing, and just letting the music kind of wash over you and, and, and envelop you and just kind of soothe you. And that's the wonderful thing about these little amplifiers is they do that really well. And this one was very, very pleasing. So that's the Boyu Sound F5. I enjoyed it. If Again, if you're tube curious, it's a very inexpensive way to get going. And if you've got a decent speaker system that, again, mid, mid 80s into the 90 dB range, you're going to be fine as long as you're not playing ACDC at concert levels. Um, it's, you know, it is just a wonderful little thing. I really enjoyed it. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you'd be willing to give me a like and a subscription. And if you wish to support the channel, there's a thank you button at the bottom of the video window and also membership links in the pinned comment and in the video description. There will be an Amazon affiliate link to this. And if you're curious about it and you want to do it, I would appreciate your using that link. There are also links to other uh, products, affiliate links to other products in the description. My playlists are in there. Some things are getting trimmed up a little bit. Um, please check out the community post. You guys have sent some great playlists in. Please comment. Let me know what you think. Are you thinking about tubes? Do you do tubes now? What are your favorite tubes? Um, I've got a bunch of tube stuff here now. I've got stuff with KT88s. I've got stuff with EL84s. I've got like four or five tube amps here. So it's going to be fun coming up. Um, anyway. Like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram. My name's Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. It's now time for you to sit back in your easy chair and listen to some wonderful music on a warm, lush, little soothing amplifier like this. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.